Hello, dears, and welcome to Al Husseini Virtual Lab Pathology Talks, Tips, and Practical Tips. Today, I'm going to share with you an important tip for skin biopsies, which is known as chemotherapy induced skin rash or chemo rash. So let's see how this really works out. This is a 57 year old female patient with recent diagnosis of breast carcinoma who started to receive chemotherapy, her first dose actually. So on day 12 of chemotherapy, she developed a skin rash and this biopsy was taken from the back. And at low power magnification, you would almost certainly be sure that this is like unremarkable skin biopsy. The epidermis looks okay. The dermis, and it's, it is a big biopsy actually. Uh, the dermis, superficial and deep dermis are okay. And part of the subcutis fat is present at the end of the slide here. Really not much in the way uh, of changes that would explain why the patient developed rash. But remember, with the skin biopsies, as I alluded to before in a previous tip, you have to examine deeper levels, several deeper levels to ensure that you are really in the middle, capturing the middle of the region. This is number one. And you have to examine specifically the epidermis at high power uh, magnification. This is tip number two. So on high power magnification, as you see, again, if you just move quickly through the epidermis, you would say, well, I don't think there is anything wrong with the epidermis. But if you start really looking hard into the epidermis, you start to pick up those dyskeratotic keratinocytes. And there is abundance of these um, uh, dyskeratotic keratinocytes or apoptotic keratinocytes. In addition to some pleomorphism or atypia that is present in the uh, keratinocytes, there were scattered mitotic activity be above actually the basal layer, again, atypical cells here, and some loss of maturation, really subtle changes. The upper dermis, almost unremarkable. The vessels are okay. The collagen is okay. So really what the, the injury, the primary site of the injury or the primary location of the injury is within the epidermis. Another focus, again, if you just quickly pass it through, screen it through the epidermis, it might look okay. However, if you move slowly on, you start to pick up those this keratotic keratinocytes. And there is abundance of these actually in a skin biopsy. Usually we should not be seeing any of those this keratotic keratinocytes. And again, some atypia present here and here, some uh, atypia here, um, a little bit disturbed uh, polarity and maturation, some perivascular lymphocytic infiltration that is minimal, but apart from that, the dermis is unremarkable. And again, another focus, and this had really most uh, of the features, again, several dyskeratotic keratinocytes present here, mitotic activity here, another one, another dyskeratotic keratinocyte, another one here. So once you see one or once you pick up one of the this keratotic keratinocytes, you will start seeing them and sometimes in aggregates. Uh, with, uh, this is associated with some maturity disruption um, in the epidermis. Now, if we go back to the history, the only uh, um, trigger or injury the patient was exposed to in the last uh, uh, 10 days before starting the rash was chemotherapy. This is the typical appearance of chemotherapy induced rash or chemo rash. And many people would not think that chemotherapy would induce some reaction like erythema multiforme reaction in the epidermis, but it does. And this would really result in withholding the chemotherapy or even changing the regimen of the chemotherapy. So the final diagnosis diagnosis in this case was erythema multiforme reaction pattern consistent with chemotherapy induced reaction. I hope you find this tip useful in your daily practice. Thank you.